Thanks again for joining us here on the Gill Athletics Connections podcast. I am super excited. You know, we have coaches from around the world joining us weekly. We get to talk to just some of the most fascinating colleges, coaches, and professional coaches out there. Today, I don't have a coach. We're still going to talk a lot about coaches, though, but I am excited. Help me welcome today, Mr. Andreas Trakowski. How, how did I do, Andreas? Did I nail it? Yeah, that was that was right. Trakowski. Yep. That, that, that's the hardest part of the podcast when we were right there was nailing your name. Uh, Andreas, thanks for joining us today, man. Uh, you are joining us from Denmark. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Copenhagen, Denmark. Awesome. Uh, thanks for having me for sure. Thanks for having me. Man, you are very welcome. I appreciate your time today. Uh, you are an, a long jumper. We're going to learn more about you and your career and the coaches that helped affect your career positively. Uh, talk to us. Give us kind of a 30,000 overfoot on Andreas. Who is Andreas? Your PR long jump, what other events, etc. Okay, uh, my name is Andreas Tchaikovsky. I'm from Copenhagen, Denmark, and I'm a long jumper. My personal best is 7.87 meters indoors, which is 25 feet, 10 inches, if I, if I can remember. Uh, outdoor PR is 7.82, and I came second at the World Junior Championship back in 2012 in uh, Barcelona, which was uh, my country, Denmark's first ever medal in history. Um, and uh, ever since then, uh, I have been you know, honored to attend college in America and, you know, uh, it's just be a dream coming true. So, yeah. So your PR is 787. Uh, it's a indoors. Yeah. Indoors. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a little known fact. I actually jumped 787 <laughs> once. You did. Yeah, wow. It, it was in the triple jump though. So I'm not sure <laughs> how that might compare, but you know, I just wanted to brag that I also <laughs> have jumped 780 plus so uh well yeah. talk to us how did you get started in the long jump um you, you were obviously doing it in Denmark who was coaching you why the long jump versus maybe other events well basically I started long jump back in I think I was 10 years old uh, my dad has always been a role model for me when I was growing up because he was a former track and field athlete on a national level not international level um and then, you know, I just came to practice every single day with him, you know, when he has to take me out. And, and I just feel a lot with, the, with track and field and especially long jump because I'm always playing in the sand. And it makes, like, my dad was like, so do you like long jump? And I was like, yes, dad. And okay, let's try some attempt. And I just started long jumping. And, and also, it's kind of like, because my dad has been seeing a lot of videos from back in the 80s and 90s of Carl Lewis and Mike Powell and Larry Marix. So I've always been watching back home in my living room, all the video recordings. And I just said, this is what I'm going to do. So yeah, it's all started. Now, I don't know much about the international scene through, you said you started around 10 years old, you know, going mm -hmm. through 18. Uh, mm -hmm. I hear a lot about the club system. Were, yeah. you, were you a club kid? And, did, and with that, did you do other events or has it always been kind of long jump focused? You know, when you're a kid, you you basically do a lot of stuff, you know, because when you're younger, you're just going to try it out, try everything out. I remember my first 400 meters, I was, I think, 12. And after that, I said to my dad, I'm not going to do this again because this is just too hard. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was uh, applying for my first uh, club called KIF, uh, Copenhagen Track and Field Club, uh, and been there since 2002. I was like 19. And then I tr uh, got a new club called Sparta Track and Field in Denmark, and then now I'm in Middle over Track and Field Club. So uh, I've been around, yeah, different clubs in Denmark. So and, and over was, the years. Was dad always the coach, or have you had other coaches up to that point? My dad was always my coach. I've always been, and uh, yeah, so it was, it was nice. And you sure. mentioned, you know, some legends, right? Myricks, Carl Lewis. Um, mm. I mean, come on, right? Uh, <laughs> was there a, I'm going to call it a localish long jump hero or maybe it was even your dad i mean dad was a pretty good athlete himself of course yeah i mean at that time he was the third fastest uh, danish sprinter in the 100 meters uh and uh, i remember watching him running you know winning a national championship back in denmark and i was just a little kid watching and cheering for him everything like that um I actually, when I, when I knew I was going to long jump is when I was 12 years old and I almost jumped uh, six meters as a mid age of 12, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, genetics wise, you know, got in from my dad and my mother. I had to mention my mother because she also ran pretty fast in the 100 meters as a 14. She went 12, six in a 100 meters as a 14 year old girl. Yeah. So uh, I think the genetics has been followed, you know, going through. So, yeah. 
I imagine that has to be special. You grew up and you got to see your dad compete and compete at a high level and then mm -hmm. reversed it. He got to coach you and see you achieve success mm -hmm. in the same sport he did. That had to be, I mean, like talk about tight bonds with you know, mom and mm -hmm. dad and, and kid. I mean, of course. I mean, I think my dad, I know what my dad is proud of me, of course. Uh, what I achieved in the track and field, you know, uh, career so far. Uh, we're not 100 percent satisfied yet because we always have this eight meters in our minds and you know we're gonna work so hard and we are working very hard to fulfill it um, of course that's going to be ups and downs in in the on the road uh, i have a lot of history of, of injuries since the since after world junior championship but you know what i'm still a hard worker and i'm a competitor so whenever happens happens so, that's yeah, awesome. uh, you know, I think to you're talking to major, you know, high level athletes such as yourself for, you know, 20 plus years now, that's a common theme of you, you just got to keep pressing the, you know, injuries yeah. uh, sometimes can occur. Thank goodness they don't always occur, but they do occur. But you can't let yeah. that set, set you back. If you do, then you'll never even have a shot to be hitting the dreams and the goals that you have. That's that's uh, exactly. That's you always got to push yourself to limits, you know, always uh, yeah. and always yeah. listen to your body. Of course, you know, that's also very important. Mm -hmm. So, so how did you, first of all, how did you get to the United States to compete for college? And was that always the goal or was there also huh. an alternative to stay at home in, in college and compete? Um, Actually, it was never, I mean, it was never my goal to attend college in America. It just came up after World Junior Championship. Uh, I remember the first coach who ever contacted me was actually Kareem Street Thompson. Uh, <laughs> from uh, He was from Missouri back then, Missouri. And uh, I had no idea about the school, but I knew who he was. Rhymes like another uh, legend, yeah. <laughs> exactly, like 863 long jumper. Um, great, great guy, great coach. Very. We still communicate, still talk today. He's happy for me to, to pick, you know, the other the schools and, you know, follow my, my dreams. Um, and it was actually after 2012, I, I remember I got like 40 or 50 DMs on the, on Facebook from coaches. I had no, no clue about who comes to me. It was just after later on, I figured out, okay, it was actually top five or top 10 schools in the whole country who contacted me. Right. Um, but, but due to my grades in high school, you know, I, I was eligible to go D1 directly. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I, I wouldn't say I was lazy. I just want to say my pro priorities at that time were more attractive feel. Mm -hmm. So my GPA wasn't high enough to go into a 10 college in D1. So what I did was I, I said, what is the other option? What can I do? Junior college. And that's where it came out to where I came to uh, went to Iowa Western Community College. Well, it's been a good good time there for one and a half year for sure. So I was uh, a junior college coach myself down just just south of Iowa Western. I was in Kansas uh, coaching down mm -hmm. there. Uh, I, I actually I'm so happy that part of my coaching career did go through the junior college route. Like it helps me, mm -hmm. you know, it keeps me grounded and understanding. You know, we're going to learn where you went after there. You know, it's a whole different level uh, for a lot of reasons and oh yeah uh, and a lot of good reasons of course uh, but mm. i have to ask not knowing anything about denmark's um and copenhagen's weather and the, you know, <laughs> i don't even know how many people i know it's a big town so there's probably a mm. whole mess of people what was it like coming to iowa western for the first time <laughs> oh my god well it was actually the coldest month it was in january so i just celebrate with Christmas holidays with my family and I was excited to go. Of course, it was hard for me because my dad has always been my coach. So letting him go and get a new coach was kind of a different experience for me. Sure. When I arrived at airport, a small, small, tiny airport in Iowa, Western Iowa, um, I was like, yo, this is super cold. Like I have never in my life experienced that much so cold before in my life. Like we were talking minus 17, not Celsius, but Fahrenheit. So, and if people know what, what Fahrenheit is to European, you gotta like double up with the, with the, with the Celsius thing, you know? And, oh man, I, the first day I, I was like, okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be interesting week for the first week. Um, Did you even yeah. have a coat? I had a coat with me. I had a good warm jacket with me, but I never, I, I didn't know it was so much like snow. I didn't look at the forecast. I had no idea. Like, you know, I was like, I'm just going to go to like same place here in Denmark, you know, right. same, same weather, right. but it wasn't. And it was just, wow. Like, but it, it was okay. I mean, I got used to it, but still, you know, it was just two months of this cold and then it came, became better. 
Well, so. I'm, I'm proud you stuck with it. I mean, honestly, you know, a lot of kids would have been like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm bailing. Either I'm going back home or <sighs> once you go through one semester, you know, you didn't you did tra you travel to a lot of meets. And so you saw other schools and you'd be like, well, wait a minute. Uh, there's a South Plains, Texas. They're warmer <laughs> down there or uh, Arizona. They've got some school, you know, like you would have mm -hmm. you could have bailed easily, but you stuck with it. Is that something yeah. from your dad and coaching? What's that stick to itness? Most definitely. I mean, I can tell you right now here in Denmark, we don't have the best facilities in track and field when we train. We only have one indoor good indoor facility in Denmark, Copenhagen. And then we have some three, uh, four other indoor facilities uh, in, in something called Yulen. It's like the same country, country but it's not a part of Denmark. Um, but I mean, my dad always taught me, you know, you know, you can make excuses, you know, don't make excuses because, you know, it's not part of who you, who you are. Uh, we, we have, we, we use what we have, you know, we, we go outside in the snow in Denmark, we jump in this ice, we just make sure we have much clothes on. It has never been an excuse for me. So, but still, of course, minus 17 Fahrenheit, it's kind of different compared to, to 15 Fahrenheit plus, you know what I'm saying? Or 20. So, yeah, oh yeah. so I called my dad immediately and I said, listen, do you know how cold it is right here? And he said, no, what is it? Minus 17. Whoa, really? Yeah, not Celsius, Fahrenheit. And I was like, oh man, he was like, well, whatever. <laughs> so now I can see how you get this from your dad, because again, the same thing I uh, described for you, you could have, you know, hey, bailed or, you know, transferred, mm. etc. It doesn't sound like your dad was like, oh, no, my, my son is in a very uncomfortable situation. Well, let's bring him home. Let's get him back home, or mm. let's find somewhere else. Like dad was like, oh, that sucks. Yeah, make it well, it, he, I mean, it's gonna be tough for him. But he told me like, you're gonna be more manned up, you know, like manned up kind of way. You see, uh, I can tell you right now, we train in an indoor basketball facility all indoor season. Yeah. You know, we have mats pulled up out an entrance of the hallway but we make it work you know um i mean not to brag or anything but i won a national junior champion a national not the njca championship mm -hmm. twice mm -hmm. with not the best facilities but it's not about the facilities that makes you a good jumper or good athlete it's the effort you put into the work that makes you a good athlete and good at you know a good champion so we don't we don't use those excuses here where I went from. So <laughs> I, I think didn't Iowa Western win the national title as well, or am I, am I getting it confused with someone? How were how were you guys as a team? Uh, we were actually ranked. Up. I think we no. I think no. We never won uh, okay. individual like a team title, but we were like I think top five in the country awesome. for sure. Yeah. Hey, that's. Uh, but we had great yeah. team, great athletes, great coaches. Yeah. Um, I actually I actually went over there here last year in the summer because I actually have green card in America. So I actually have an office over there with my oh, business, wow. which we're going to talk about later on. Yeah. Um, so I came visiting them and it was just amazing to see new facilities actually. Awesome. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. So well, let's, let's make sure we're giving them a shout out because you know, they're, they were dealing with no facilities and basketball gym, stuff like that. Tell us the coaches oh, yeah. you had there. Uh, Shereen Williams, a sprinter, uh, sprint coach from Jamaica, uh, coach, former head coach Statzer, coach Statzer, he's a former head coach there, Dave Craven, former yeah. coach, jump coach there, and then uh, Steve Gordon, my coach there for 2015 also, which awesome. has been helping me a lot of my progress in the long jump. Those coaches I appreciate very, very much, and you know, it's, uh, you know, they're great coaches and great human beings as well. Awesome. So, Boy, that's great to hear. That's a, that is as well as a common theme, the great coaches who are great people. Mm. That, that's, that's awesome to hear. So you mentioned being in the basketball gym. When I coached junior college, we had to do the basketball gym thing as well. Uh, but you transfer, uh, you didn't transfer to a place where you had to tr uh, practice in the basketball gym. Tell us where you mm. ended up transferring to. Um, I got a, after my yeah, outdoor championship title 2015 um i got an offer from the university of arkansas racerbacks go hawks um and uh, i you know i i i went i went on a lot of visits of course to different schools but you know i had good connection with my coach there travis gifford a very good connection we clicked mutually we had good humor we still talk this these days um and just the training partner as well jerry lawson you know bowman award winner nice. I ended up staying with him for two years in the house. We're living together for two years and training partner as well. You cannot, you cannot, you know, just, you know, I walk around the training facility and I just saw champions all around, all around me. And it's amazing, you know, because, you know, surround yourself with champions, you know, surround yourself with greatness and, and the greatness will hopefully come to you. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> 
Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I think so highly of the power of a coach, not only mm. technically what they can bring to an athlete, mm. you know, how they stage your training and prepare for you, mm. but how they mm. treat you as a human being as well. And, you know, you mentioned Travis Gufford, good friend of ours. Uh, what a great, I mean, he's a better human being oh, than he is coach. And he is a heck of a coach. <laughs> oh, he, he's a heck of a coach. Oh yeah, he is. I mean, he knows his stuff. He knows what he's doing. And I, he, he, he has, he has, produce great great athletes you know and, and tremendous athletes who is now you know mentioned one omar mcleod who you know when won the olympic uh, games in 2016 and went 10 hurdles um you know he, he's been produced a lot of good athletes jerry lawson as well i i can i can i can name plenty of names but you know he's just such a great humble man and, yes. and, and great 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 person so so we've had a Arkansas alum on the show before, uh, Coach Cedric Vaughn, who's down at Arkansas Baptist College. He was a uh, herder, okay. I believe. And mm -hmm. he described the specialness of being on the team at Arkansas. You know, there's a few teams that are just, uh, there's a lot of teams that are special. Don't get me wrong. I mean, first of all, no matter what mm -hmm. level you are, if you're a junior college, D3, D2, D1, mm -hmm. that's special. And it can be life-changing for you. And it should be life-changing for you. There's a few programs because of the history in Arkansas is one of those. What was it like? I mean, you mentioned, you know, you see the banners and you've got mm -hmm. Lawson on the team. Uh, maybe you have alumni that are coming back and you're like, holy cow, this guy was an eight meter, you know, like there's handfuls of them. What was it? Yeah, like? I mean, I can tell you someone, I was at one person particularly that actually was like, okay, wow, he's actually here. Um, I watched the, I went to the Berlin 2009 World Championship at age of 16, watched Usain Bull ran the 100 and 200 meter world record mm -hmm. with my father. And my dad, wow. and the the second and the, the guy who came third place in the um, two hundred meters, Wallace Spearman, um, he was actually you know there, and I was like, I looked up to him, I saw him running, and I saw him like, wow, this guy is actually so fast, you know, and then I went to Arkansas, and he was there, and I did not know he was at Arkansas Razorbacks, he was actually a legend there, you know, and just to talk to him and, you know, making good friends and talking and, you know, making fun of each other, practice, you know, you know, talking trash, you know, that's how we do sometimes, and it's just fun, you know, and, and, and it just made me realize that, oh, I'm actually a good place now, a great, great place with legends, like, being attending at here, you know, and it's just amazing. And I appreciate all the coaches there for sure. The head coach, Chris Bogman, you know, Doug Hayes and Travis Gifford, amazing coaches, amazing environment. Really appreciate them for sure. You know, a uh, little known secret. I never, I didn't like Wallace Spearman for quite a while. <laughs> uh, Wallace, when he was an undergrad at Arkansas is when I was coaching at Mississippi State. So every weekend, okay. every conference, every nationals, I had to go up against Wallace and Tyson and I believe Omar Brown was there. I mean, it was just unfair, you know, really. It was, uh, it's like, I just don't like you guys, you know. Um, uh, they had a great coach, Lance Brahman, who's a good friend of ours, uh, who uh, coaches for Adidas now. And uh, I'm much happier. I like Wallace now, now that I don't have to coach against him. I think he's a fantastic person. I've seen him. We, we know each other. We met in different uh, situations and uh, mm. he's kind of the, uh, I was just listening to the athletics LLC uh, from a few weeks ago. And they were talking about the um, American track league that we had on TV through the indoor season and that they needed a lot of help in Fayetteville. And Wallace Spearman was like the mayor of Fayetteville. Like everybody knows him. You know, you yeah, everybody know, yeah. That's such a great oh, personality. Yeah. You can't help but not like Wallace, you know? So, no, of course. So much, much better friends with Wallace now that he's, I don't have to coach against him. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's how it is sometimes, you know, yeah. when you're coaching and uh, have, yeah. So yeah. And competitors, you know. If, if, if yeah. I were coaching and you were, you know, if I was still at Mississippi State, when you, I wouldn't have liked you either. I'd been like, Andre, uh, tired <laughs> of my, uh, you know, I, I did have uh, one of my highest coaching achievements. Uh, I did have an SEC champion in the long jump. And okay. that, that meant a lot. And one of the biggest things for me was um, Dan Paff was the coach at Florida. Do, do you know Dan Paff? You know, I don't know. Oh, yeah. High yeah, level. Yeah. And so I beat, he had a really good kid, Mike Morrison. Uh, and I say, I beat him, you know, my, my kid beat him and Dan Paff, I was a, you know, I was a nobody coach. Dan Paff comes over to me and shakes my hand and says, congratulations. And it was like, like the Pope. That's an honor. Came over that, that's an honor. You know, exactly. that's an honor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I have framed that over my bed. That's my highest honor <laughs> in life. <laughs> Isn't Dan Pfaff, Dan Pfaff an Altis right now? Altis? Yeah, Altis, exactly right. Yeah, he's working yeah. with a lot of elites, doing a, a, you know, what he's doing a great job of, of, of many, many things. But, you know, a guy like that, his knowledge set is invaluable 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, like one day when he unfortunately shuffles off this mortal coil, we'll lose that. And so he is mm -hmm. what I'm so proud and happy of and for him is he is doing a fantastic job of education. I mean, he is, if, if you are a coach today and you aren't seeking him out and seeking Altus out for education, well, you're, you're missing the boat here. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're giving it away, <laughs> you know, all the secrets, if you will, they're, it's right there in front of you and you you just need to capture it as a coach. And so, so proud of Dan mm -hmm. and uh, Stu McMillan, all those guys that are doing the Altus education. Phenomenal. That, that is what we need more. We, we, we rise all of our coaching education up. Well, the sport mm. <laughs> rises with that. We get better exactly. sprinters, throwers, et cetera. So, uh, yeah. so you, you finished out jumping at Arkansas. You stayed there for a couple of years and then go back mm. home and you're still jumping, right? Yeah, I'm still jumping. And uh, I'm, I live uh, here in part-time Denmark and, you know, part-time America, but, you know, mostly I'm here because, you know, I feel like it's my headquarter kind of. And uh, my dad is here as well. And we live in the same city and we train every single day together. He actually got to pick me up at 5 p.m. actually, you know, practice. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we went back to Denmark, train now full time uh, and uh, doing all, do my best to achieve my goals for sure. And, and you've so. had some amazing coaches. What is it like? To, it, how special is it to come back and dad is back to being your coach? You know, there's some familiarity oh. to that. I mean, how, how does that feel? It, it feels amazing. I, I can be honest. After 2018, when I graduated from um, from University of Arkansas and I had to say goodbye to Travis Gifford, not say goodbye, but see you soon because I'm going, you know, um, it was kind of like an odd feeling of going back to my dad, but also a very good feeling because, you know, my dad's, you know, warm up drills and it's kind of different compared to US warm up drills. But my dad also used some of the other drills I've been doing here in America just to emphasize in his workouts, you know? And, in, in, and it's just, yeah, it's a great feeling. I mean, I miss him a lot, of course, as coach as coaching, um, miss hearing his voice yelling at me. He he doesn't care about like what people are listening to. He just yells at the track, you know, let's go, you know, you know, last one, come yeah. on, he all the way through. <laughs> That's something I miss, you know, yeah. and because he's my dad, you know, and his family. So, but but sometimes you know it, it's not always great, you know, to have your dad as a coach. Trust me, yeah. you know, it's hard. It's not easy. It's very very hard. A lot of feelings get into this, you know, because he wants the best out of me, you know, and. Sometimes he cannot control that because I cannot control, you know, you, you can only control what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I know he wants extra for me, you know, extra better. You can, you can do this. Come on, man. You, you, I taught you this, you know, it's more family thing, but it's all right. You know, you yeah. get used to this. We, you know, we see great connections between coach and athlete, uh, especially as even they go past a four year college coach, you know, they've coached for mm -hmm. six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, but you know, dad's known you since you were born, <laughs> you know, dad, mm. that's like, Oh yeah. I saw your attitude at five years old. I know you can do this. You know, you, you care more about your kid, no matter how close you get mm. to your athlete and you, you're both yeah. your kid and athlete. So uh, yeah, I, I'm sure it had to be special for him as well when you came home and it was like, all right, let's, let's go do what we do, son. Let's, let's get to the track. <laughs> yes. I mean, it was, it was a good feeling for the first week for sure. Uh, it was totally different, but it, it's nice to be back for sure. So awesome, man. Well, I'm so proud of you and your dad being able to do that. That's uh, that appreciate it. There's a lot of special coach athlete relationships. Nothing will transcend a coach athlete who also happens to be father and son or mm -hmm. mom and son or mom and daughter. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's that's pretty special. Well, let's take a step off the track. So, uh, probably the worst secret ever if you've already seen the title of today's episode. Andreas is not only a great jumper, uh, but he's also started this really cool social media thing. This is what I wanted to focus on and learn more about. Andreas is the person behind Jumpers World. So you've seen Jumpers World on Twitter. You've seen Jumpers World on Instagram, Facebook. We're going to learn some more avenues here. Tell me, Andreas, uh, I mean, I know what Jumpers World is because, you know, I'm a huge social media guy, so I like it. And, you know, I, I see all the videos and stuff like that. Tell me what it is. What, what do you envision Jumpers World social media to be? Thank you for your words, for sure. Um, yeah, Jumpers World is a track and field focused uh, social media agency, you know, located here in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, but also Omaha, Nebraska. Um, you know, we specialize in focusing on just the jump events in track and field. And the reason why I say just the jump events was because in the beginning, you know, when I started the company back in 2015, I felt there was no attention for the jumpers, no lack of attention or like if something big happened for them, like no news was brought off, brought out on, let's say, example of other channels. I can name Flowcheck, Runner Space, whatever. 
but there was no platform or source that promoted all these jumpers. And I feel a little sad about it because I was jumping myself and I just heard the news on, on Twitter about this guy jumped as far, but there was no video of it. There was no, no source about it, nothing. So I just started in my dorm room and I said, listen, I'm going to make my own thing. And the race is history. And yeah. What did you, uh, which um, social media platform did you start with? Instagram, actually, Instagram. Yeah, okay. And uh, I was just uh, pitching and saying, you know, what should, what should I, what should I name it? You know, it has to be something like jumpers, you know? So there's like jumpers worldwide, jumpers globally, jumpers global, and say jumpers world. It's like, okay, that sounds better because the whole world and it's only jumpers. So that's what I came out with. And I just started posting videos. I uh, had no idea about the copyright infringement, all the rules that I know now know about. You yeah, know, I was going to ask course. you about that. <laughs> yeah, but but ever since I started posting those videos, you know, it just exploded because um, Christian Taylor, a good friend of mine today, uh, he was actually the first person at least to follow the page. Um, oh, and, uh, and he commented the video, liked the video, and then, you know, engagement just explored. And then thousands of new people start following the page and now we are basically like overall the second biggest uh, community in the whole world right now in terms of engagement wow. so is that yeah, right 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 yeah right before world electics right now so we wow. we generate pretty much between 40 to 60 70 million views a month just on instagram so i uh, know it's uh, it's a lot of good it's a big numbers but yeah it's uh it's amazing I was going to ask, you talked about the copyright. So um, there's, first of all, what I, I love what you're doing for a couple of reasons. One, spotlight on anything with track and field, I, you know, we're going to mm. be in love with. Second of all, love the jumps. Come on. One of the greatest parts of track and Appreciate field. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, we, there's another podcast out there called Through the Point. Um, and I'm sorry, mm -hmm. it's Scott is his first name. He focuses on the javelin specifically. Yeah. And he had uh, spoke on one of his episodes. He either does or used to have a Through the Point Instagram and it got taken down because of copyright. And so I was going to ask you, how do you, I'm going to say this probably the wrong way. How do you get around it or how, how are you doing the right things? Because you're, you're obviously not taken down and you you post a ton of videos yeah i don't know if a lot of people know this story but the true followers of jumbo's will know this um i actually my first account jumbo's will got taken down when i had fifty thousand followers oh and i started over from zero to now 355k wow um, and here's the thing i had no idea about the copyright infringement i just thought you know i just share i get the credit and that's mm -hmm. it you know what i'm saying so there should be no issue here until you know, copyright strikes came in on my old page and I was like, okay, what's going on? And then one way I could not log into it. And then I tried contact Instagram, nothing worked really. And I said to myself, listen, I can give up now or I can start over. And I, and I decided to start over, which is of course a good decision because well, now look where, where we are right now. So, and, and there's the theme, right? Uh, the no give up, the, the no uh, stop, start over. Okay, fine, start over. I, I had a setback, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. I, that's a theme mm. with you, Andreas, and I love that. That's a great theme to have, my friend. I love that. Yeah, Appreciate I didn't know it. you also got taken down. Yeah, wow. It, it yeah, but actually, you, you, you can't yeah, talk to Instagram. It, There's no talking to them. No, but here's the thing. Actually, last year, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, my, my page uh, account, Jumbo's Bowl, with uh, 200,000, this one I have right now got taken down again. But then I went to court and I won the case and then they reactivated my account. And it was just so sorry to say stupid and nonsense of the, I'm not going to name the, the account who reported me, sure. but they know who they are. Um, uh, it was just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, we talk about private video, not even a broadcast video. We talk about private video and uh, they reported because it was our territory. So all the cameras around, you know, mm -hmm. don't, you cannot post that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I actually got permission to post it from another person. So that's the thing, you know, put him in a trap and then report to Instagram and Instagram is like deleted. Right. Um, but now I have some connections now to Instagram or Facebook uh, so I can get quicker into them if something happens again. Because eventually, you know, people people is going to lie about they own the footage. So you got to be more aware before you post anything. That's why we never, never post anything we don't own. Mm. So that's the number one rule. Always ask, make sure you have to copyright for it. If you don't have it, don't post it. 
Yeah. You know, hearing that story and hearing Scott's story at through in the point, you know, uh, I, I, I get copyright laws. I mean, like I, I understand mm. it. Because me me of, too. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but when, and I guess it's hard when, you know, you're talking about the internet and you're talking about Instagram and, you know, billions of accounts and things like that. So you, you can't mm. police everyone individually. So you have to make these rules that capture everybody. But, you know, the goal of what you were doing and are doing is not to steal or, and, and take credit you're not taking those videos and saying, look, I did this. You're like, you know, look, no. they did this. It's a jumper and you're sharing it. So it's not nefarious. It's, it's all in positivity. No. So I, it's, uh, it's kind of one of those things. Where and that's, like, and that's why I'm actually trying now. we try not to partner, partner up with different, you know, uh, actually, uh, businesses and also, you know, federations around the world for track and field, because mm. what not, what, what, why not promote the athletes? Why not showcase the athletes on the biggest platform in the whole world? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, why not? help them get promotions, you know, get them out there to sponsors because mm. track and field is no, it's, I'm sorry, it's not a money sport as mm. football or soccer or tennis or golf, but what we can do is help promote them in the best way possible. Mm. So that's always been the number one thing for John as well also is to help those at least to get the promotion and get the attention they need, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Now I know Instagram is your biggest platform, 300,000 plus. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you first started it, though, did you think it would hit 300,000 plus? Were you just happy to get to 300? Was that a big number? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, to be honest, the sky's the limit. I don't put no limits on myself. So, uh, but yeah, of course, you always dream about this 1 million, you know, always do that. Yeah. And, and that, I mean, it's a, it's a goal of mine, of course. But in the beginning, I had no goals about how many followers I would get. I just want to highlight, you know, the greatest jumpers in the whole world and uh, to help them get the attention they deserve so well i appreciate your openness and to the some of the negativity that's happened with these copyrights and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff what has been some of the positives is there any, anything that surprised you whether it was a post that went super crazy the engagement which is obviously huge yes of course i mean i can mention a lot of posts but i can tell you one thing is i have received text messages from different fans of Jumbo's world taking having a new tattoo of my logo on their body I know. Wow. <laughs> I know i don't i don't i don't know if i can show you finding right here but usually you know um some people from germany or spain or whatever they have been taking photos of them actually getting a big tattoo of the jumbo's world logo either the calf or the chest on the back and the first my first thought was what are you doing like <laughs> like look what are you doing you know because but it, but in the end of the day, I was happy because like this is making me happy. And also receiving messages that someone says, "Hey, hey, Jumbo's World, I just want to say thank you so much for motivating me to get back to my sport again." You know, I haven't got the the motivation uh, as before, but after seeing all the great videos of people coming back from injuries, yeah. um, jumping again, it makes me want to come back again. So thank you so much. That's something that makes me happy, you know. And that's the whole thing about Jumbo's World, you know. So. Um, makes me so happy to to see those kind of messages from people for sure. That's super positive. I mean, I, I was expecting you to tell me one post that hit a million views or shares. And no, stuff, not, but that's instead, no. You give examples yeah. of people's passion. I mean, when you tattoo mm. a logo of something, I mean, that's that's your life, right? I'm a jumper. Uh, that's passion. And then mm. the motivation that, you know, I, I was feeling down injuries were getting me, you know, so you, you have a lot of mm. experience with, you know, that kind of mentality that, that seeing the videos that you're sharing, motivate them and keep them motivated and maybe re motivate them. I, there is no higher gift, right? I mean, that's, that's no, beyond no. the number of followers and shares and oh yeah, what have you. I always want to get back to the sport. You know, I always feel like I want to get back some way, somehow, how can I do, can I, how can I get back to the sport that the, the sport had given me over the years? And that's always been my motivation, you know, always grind hard, always do what I can do to make the sport uh, bigger and uh, bigger and bigger. And then hopefully one day, you know, we'll see what happens. So, yeah. Real leaders give value. <laughs> and that's, that's what you're providing. I love that. That's, that's value, Appreciate value, it. value. What, what has been like when, as when you're sharing and post and you're thinking about what posts to share, what go, what's your process there for what videos to share, what not to share? Okay. Um, I mean, I really want to make sure that people enjoy the post and posting. Of course, there's going to be some people saying, oh, this is not relevant on this page and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, there's always going to be people like this. You know, you, you cannot control, you know, all these, uh, let's say, 
fans or whatever. Um, I, it's just like, you know, I want to pose between a mixture of funny to awesome to motivating videos. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because you had to engage with the followers. What do they want to see? Mm. You know, what do they want to see us post on John Bosworth's account? And uh, over the years, I've been learning a lot about it. And to be honest, uh, Mike, there's some videos I've been posting that blow up like ridiculously. Mm -hmm. um, last month or two months ago, we, we, we got 55,000 followers in just 30 days. Wow. Out of three videos, three viral videos. And it was funny videos, something I edited on my computer mm -hmm. with music in the background with some fast sound effects. But both video got 25 plus million follow, uh, views. Wow. So, and that's just, it, it can happen like that. You know, yeah. you're just gonna you're just gonna post the right content on the right time, of course. Um, so yeah, yeah, I love the the mixture. You know, the funny ones, things like that. Mm. Uh, there's yeah. some other there's other great you know Instagram pages out there. A friend of mine, Grant Benzel, runs Throwers Meme Instagram mm -hmm. page. You know, it's, it's all memes on throwers, and they're funny and things like that. But I love your mixture of you know the hilarious you know, and I say hilarious meaning they're typically you know the um, the fail videos, right? We see a guy that falls or what have you. And, and what's yeah. funny about those, it's not laughing at the person; it's more laughing at yourself. Like, oh, I've done that. Like, oh, yeah, who who hasn't you know bailed out on a jump or you know? I know, I know. The cross I'm, I'm, I'm not trying. Yeah. I'm not trying to post anything right. like that's gonna hurt them. You know, like right. I heard something like yeah. like broken leg or something like that. Because right. you have to understand one thing: the people, the, the video I'm posting are actually people that want me to post those videos. Mm, good point. That's you know, a good point. like all these athletes that actually has fault, fall, fall, failed, and in the high jump or pole vault or mm. anything are, who look injured. Those are the people who actually send me those videos and say, "Hey, can you please post this on Instagram on Jump as well?" Mm. So when people make these negativity comments about why you posting this, you shouldn't post it. How is he okay? Or well, guys, I'm not going to post anything if this guy's really hurt. That's not my intention of this. That's not what we do. But we want to make it more exciting and more fun to watch, you know, because, you know, in the end of the day, man, you, there got to be some fun sometimes, you know, yeah. and, and, and that's how it is. Uh, well, that's so, a, yeah. Well, that's a great point about that. You know, the, the athlete themselves has said, yeah, yeah, the, you know, post this, please. Yeah, it's show the real world of jumping. By the way, it's not, it's not all PRs and it's, <laughs> it's not all PR, it's not all right. easy. No, no, no. <laughs> so, you have those uh interesting videos, you have uh huge performance videos, whether it's uh, you know, world record attempts or getting close and um, PRs and national records, and then you also have these, you know. I, I guess inspirational is the only way to that I can think of it, put, put in it. Mm -hmm. One of the videos I saw fairly recently was a uh, Paralympic jumper doing the high yeah. jump. I think it was, and I and I can't remember if you posted the, the comment was on uh, was on there something about you know what's your excuse like look look yeah, at this that, person yeah. And it, and it really was, it's like, man, you know, I got up this morning and I complained that my back was stiff, so I'm not going to go work out today. And it's mm -hmm. like, uh, look at this guy. Yeah, this this guy I mean, literally has one leg and he's high jumping higher than I ever could have dreamed of high jumping hmm. with quote unquote two good legs. I mean, that that to me is so inspirational, not that transcends jumping as well, even though it's the example is high jumping. If I'm a thrower, I have to look at that and go, oh, yeah, what is my excuse? If I'm a distance runner? Yeah, what, what is my excuse? I mean, seriously, man, I have so much respect for Paralympic athletes like it's you have no idea. That's why I also post a lot of the Paralympic athletes. I'm actually going to post a video today of a world record actually recently from Australia, a, a woman jumping five meters 30 with no legs at all, like two parts your legs. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just so inspiring to see those people jumping and, you know, because they're doing all they can to, you know, to perform well, you know, and, and, and that's why also, I mean, talk with the Paralympic community as well. And also the para, para athletics page where we form a mutual beneficial relationship and we're in terms of, I can share all the videos with no copyright or anything uh, problem with that because mm -hmm. they love what I'm doing as well or what we're doing. Um, and, uh, and that's why I have a great team right now with two or three editors right now helping me with making the uh, videos, but, but mostly I'm the one who takes care of, of all the, the, pay, the, the videos being posted and everything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, accolades to you, not only for what you're doing completely, but honestly, that Paralympic side, that it's not, um, 
as a as a as a, a side child like it's like oh it's part of it. they're jumpers too just they're in paralympics we're in olympics or national game whatever it doesn't matter it's we're, we're athletes we're jumpers mm, it, it's yeah. it's it's jumpers world not jumpers able-bodied world right it's it's jumpers where you jump it's all kind of jumpers yeah but also i want to tell you something we wanted to make to walk into more other events as well now. So what we do is now is uh, we actually own the company, uh, the page called Track Center. I have not heard about that one, mm -hmm. but it's a new, uh, it's actually former called Triple Jumpers, but now we want to move it to more globalized, like, you know, all events also, because we, we want to we wanna build jumpers. Well, we want to have this portfolio of all the biggest pages around the world so we can help the sport grow in the best way possible. Awesome. Um, because, I don't know if you know all these pages with throwers or javelin or whatever, but we want to bring all the sports together, all the events together in one page, not on Jumbo Spoil, but on other pages. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do. We want to help the community. We want to help the sport the best way possible. I love that. Make sure you check out our show notes. Andreas will give me all of the, the links in uh, the different accounts. We'll make sure they're in mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the show notes as well as our social media posts as well. Uh, you know, again, Appreciate it. A, a rising tide raises all ships. So anything we can do to promote, promote the events of this great sport, which is the greatest sport in the world, by the way. And it is, I don't no, care. You hands down. A, yeah. You can be a soccer fan. Soccer's great. You can be an American football fan. Mm. I'm a huge mm. American football, college football fan. Uh, there is nothing better than track and field for so many reasons, the inclusiveness, yeah. uh, the different body types, the success ratios. I mean, literally athletics is mm. the, the best sport. It is. It's, a, it's the best sport ever. There's so many events, there's so many remarkable performances that's been going on, you know, and it's just incredible. Imagine me measuring out nine meters in the long jump or 29 feet. You know, people don't understand how can people jump that far? You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. So I agreed 100%. Well, Andreas, as we start to wrap up, tell us what is, um, I don't want to call it the end game, but but what what is, what are you working toward? You mentioned about trying to bring different niche uh, pages together under one, you know, mm -hmm. athletics uh, mm -hmm. to, to help, help raise the sport. You mentioned you have a team, a company. What, what's, what are we all trying to do here? What, what's the end game for you? I mean, the end game is, of course, is that Jumbos will, will someday have their own competition circuit around the Europe, you know, having our own competitions where we bring the best jumpers ever to those competitions with music playing, like new thing of bringing attention just to jumpers, but broadcasting from people who can watch, uh, maybe pay the view, but it depends on, you know, what jumpers are jumping, you know, as as the beginning of Jumbo's world, I've been building a relationship with a lot of great, great champions in the world, Olympic champions over the years. Uh, Christian Taylor, I mentioned, Will Clay, Brittany Reese, uh, I can name so many more, but I, I've talked to them about, hey guys, you want, if you wanna, if, if I made a competition called Jumbo's World Classic or something like that, would you attend the competition? And everybody said yes, with like, you know, <laughs> they, they really wanna attend. And it makes me happy because they say, Andreas, you helped us. Now we want to help you. And that's what I respect a lot from people. And uh, I've always said to them, listen, guys, if you need anything, just give me a text, something like that. I will do my best to help you. Um, and that's what I see Jumbo's world in the future, but also working with different companies of globalizing, you know, this track and field event. You know, I cannot say what, but something big news coming very, very soon nice. on Jumbo's world. But I cannot mention right now, but it's going to be extraordinary, new, new, new level. So, well, you know, I'll I feel like without overstating it, we unveiled Jumper's World and introduced Andreas, the, the person behind it. We won't, we won't, um, spoil your big news that's coming up soon. We'll, we'll just look forward to that. That'll be awesome to see. Yeah. I mean, watch out, guys. It's going to be amazing. So, <laughs> well, you know what? Listening to your story, Andreas, I have no doubts that that is is true. And no matter what happens with it, you will continue to fight for it. I love this theme of never quit, never stop, uh, no, no no excuses. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. You know, going to minus no fifteen, no excuses. <laughs> put on some gloves and let's, let's get to jumping, man. So uh, really love that attitude. Obviously, you know, please let mom and dad know that, you know, that that's, you're a byproduct of them. Uh, I, I wish um, yeah, one day I will meet mom and dad. Cause I, yeah, I love meeting the Thank people you. behind the people and mm -hmm. it's obvious that they are, you know, your leadership 
uh, athleticism, you know, you can't escape genetics, but your leadership, your attitude, your positive attitude has to start somewhere. There has to be embers. And I think mom and dad are the obvious candidates here that they are the fire starter for you and some of the great things that you have done. And even more importantly, that you will continue to do. Thank you so much, my few words. I really appreciate it. That thing, my mom and dad will be so happy to hear this for sure. Make sure I, you know, we're, we're connected on Twitter. So I want you to tell me that you told mom and dad this. Okay. I mean, I, that's important. I will. I will. Don't that worry. Will, they, 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 I'll, I'll give them a comment. Uh, I will tell you what they said. So awesome, for sure. Awesome. Well, uh, again, check out the show notes. Uh, make sure you are following Jumpers World on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, his other uh, ones that he's coming out with, they'll be in the show notes as well. We didn't mention you are starting Jumpers World, starting out on TikTok as well. Is that correct? Yeah, we, we, we're starting to move on TikTok as well, but we're staying slowly moving on, but we'll, we'll be on TikTok as well. So I yeah, know. you can check it out as well somebody listening right now is on TikTok. I'm not, and I'm a huge social media guy and I'm still not on TikTok <laughs> just yet. I'm a huge Twitter guy. Twitter's my main. I, I like the, oh, the yeah. communication. Twitter is nice as well. Yeah. Uh, make sure you're following them and sharing and uh, spreading the word. Cause again, a rising tide raises all ships. And the more that we can have people celebrating the great jumpers of this world, the better we will be for track and field. Uh, so Andreas, thank you, man. I really do appreciate your time today. I know you gotta, you gotta do what, what an athlete does. You gotta get to practice, man. So uh, I'm just so thankful yeah. you to spend some time with us today. No problem, Mike. Thanks for having me for sure. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you for listening today. I really, again, appreciate your time and energy. You have a lot of choices out there for your time. You know, there's podcasts, there's YouTube, there's work, there's practice, there's coaching, there's parenting, there's a lot of activities out there. And you decide to spend time with us today. And I'm just so thankful for that. If you receive value from today's podcast, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that other people in your network would probably enjoy some value from this as well. And what great value here. We get to go watch videos of awesome athletes competing and achieving high success. So share this uh, episode with your network and join us next time. Next week, we'll be back at it again with another great track and field coach connection. Have an awesome day, everybody.